Bio 6611 with that introduction and those orchestra hits at the end to carry us through, we're ready to talk about diagnostic plots for simple linear regression. We'll first again remind ourselves of those linear regression assumptions, discuss types of diagnostic plots, and then see some examples of how those assumptions might be violated in the plots. So let's start with a refresher of our assumptions. Now remember there are five generally speaking assumptions of a linear model, and two of them we generally infer from scientific knowledge or the study design. For example, that assumption of existence that for any fixed value of x, y is a random variable with a certain probability distribution having a finite mean and variance. This is something we will infer from our scientific knowledge or that of collaborators or the study design. We also have that assumption of independence, that the values of y or outcome are statistically independent of one another, and that's really something that will also rely on the study design and the data we have at our disposal. However, we have three assumptions we can actually evaluate with diagnostic plots in a nice sort of visual framework. We have that assumption of linearity, where the expected value of y is equal to mu of y given x and that the assumption there is that it's approximately going to be a straight line function of our predictor x in simple linear regression. We also have that assumption of homoscedasticity or equality of our variances so that the variance of y will be the same for any given value of x we choose out of our possible domain or range in our sample. That is for all possible values of x we say that they're all equal to each other regardless of x is equal to 1, 2, or some arbitrary value x within our possible range of values. Finally, we have our assumption of normality, that for any fixed value of x, y given x will be normally distributed. Now again, just remind ourselves here, this doesn't imply that y is normally distributed, it implies that y given x is normally distributed, or that our residuals are. And so with that refresher, let's touch on the types of diagnostic plots we might find useful to evaluate those assumptions. So we're going to evaluate or explore four types of plots here today to assess that linearity, homoscedasticity, and normality assumption. The first is a pretty basic yx scatter plot where we will plot the dependent and independent variables against each other. Now this is very informative for simple linear regression with one predictor it's less useful when we have multiple predictors, and we'll see other ways we can visualize that type of data. We'll look at the residual scatter plot. We'll plot the residuals, or potentially the jackknife residuals, some form of our residuals at least, versus our predictor or predictors to look for potential patterns. Now when there's multiple predictors, we can also plot against the predicted values instead of the predictors, or the y hats. We'll examine the residual histogram, which allows us to visualize the distribution of the residuals. And we'll also see what a normal probability or QQ plot looks like, where we can plot the residuals versus the expected standard deviation from a normal distribution. To illustrate what these plots should look like if our assumptions are met, let's simulate a data set so we can set the truth and demonstrate that our assumptions are actually satisfied. Now we'll walk through briefly the setup of this code for how we're simulating the simple linear regression model in case you want to try it on your own or play around with some of these parameters or examples. Now of course, the first thing we're doing is setting our seed for reproducibility. So in the future, if we want to recreate this example, we could come back and do so. In this next line of code, we're just specifying a object n to be our sample size or number of data points, which in this case is 100. We're then defining a y and x, we're actually initializing the outcome vector y to be full of na values for a hundred of them to actually fill in below, and then we're going to create these predictor values to be a sequence from 0.25 up to 25 in increments of 0.25. We then are going to set and define what we want our true intercept and slope parameters to be, which in this case are 1 and 2 respectively.
Now we see below here in our for loop that's in the center of our screen, that's actually going to generate then the outcome of our data. In this first line of code here, we're going to simulate the error term or that normality and heteroscedasticity assumptions we're making. We see specifically here, we're assuming that that variability of y given x is going to have a standard deviation of 3. We can then see that for each observation, we're going to take our defined uh, intercept value of 1, that slope value of 2, multiply it by the corresponding x value for the sequence above, and then add that error term we just simulated from. We'll then generate a data frame and we can use the LM or GLM function to fit the model in R to actually have to graph and play around with. So let's see what our assumptions look like if they're met with that yx scatter plot. Well, if they are met actually, we'll see a linear relationship between y and x with the points pretty evenly distributed along that fitted regression line. And sure enough, we tend to see that it's pretty equally spread below and above, and it appears to actually have a linear relationship between the predictor, our x that we simulated, and the outcome we see over here on the y-axis. If we're looking at the residual scatter plot, if the assumptions are met, we should see again an evenly distributed cloud of points with no really obvious pattern around that x-axis. And so here we're seeing the x-axis for our jackknife residuals, thanks to the nice features we have there, are pretty evenly centered around uh, that zero value, both to about negative two up to two with one possible point that might be an outlier. And we'll discuss ways to detect those later in the semester. For a residual histogram, we'll take those jackknife residuals and instead of plotting them in that cloud before, we'll just make a histogram of those values if our assumptions are met, it should look roughly normal or approximately normal, which in this case, it looks fairly close to meeting those assumptions. Of course, as humans, we're good at picking out patterns where none may exist or really trying to find something that's a perfect fit when in fact, we just need approximate fits. But another way to evaluate that normality assumption is through the norm normal probability plot or QQ plot. If the assumptions are met, this should be a straight line which in this case, it's fairly close. We do see a little bit of below and above patterns, um, but for the most part, since we simulate the data and know it's from the true area where the assumptions are met, it generally looks fairly good. Now let's take a look at a few examples where the assumptions are violated, and quite clearly so. For example, if we violate our equal variance assumption where the variance is not constant across values of x, we might see something like a funnel shape um, in the case of our scatter plot or our residual plot here where it actually shows that as values of x get bigger, there tends to be more variability. In this case as well, we also see that there is an extra peak in our histogram of the residuals and there's a decided pattern in the normal probability plot where there's a clear above and below relationship. Now, if the linearity assumption is violated, we'll see that there is some sort of noticeable nonlinear trend to our data. Here it kind of has like a banana-esque shape. We also see that our residual plot almost has like some sort of cornucopia type um, shape going on. Histogram over here of our residuals tends to have some extra points towards the top. But in this case, the actual normal probability plot looks like it might be okay. There's not too much of a deviation. But we can see here that looking at some of these plots does raise some questions or concerns. Now for normality, this can be a little more subtle when looking at the scatter and residual plots. Here we might question normality because it looks like that area that's more within the same plus or minus around our fitted line has this sort of cloud of points at the top that doesn't really seem to be present on the lower end or the below the regression line. Likewise, in our residual plot, we see that there's more points that fall above two standard deviations with our studentized deleted residuals or the jackknives than below. And likewise, our histogram of the residuals has some points really going far out in the tail. Maybe one of the clearest things though, in case we thought that it was just an off chance that the histogram tail was a bit long, or maybe we're just imagining that these points at the top are atypical, is the fact that the normal probability plot does have this pretty big deviation there and maybe a smaller one of concern at the lower tail.
So in summary, seeing the examples of what these diagnostic plots may look like if the assumptions are more or less met because we simulated the data versus three cases where each of those different assumptions was violated, we can note how those diagnostic plots may look and what hints or patterns may emerge that suggest that an assumption or multiple assumptions are violated. Now we didn't address how to address those violations, which we'll tackle in our next lecture discussing transformations we can consider and use to see if it better meets our linear regression modeling assumptions.